Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I will be giving a spoiler-free review of Star Trek Coda Oblivion's Gate, the final novel in the Star Trek Coda trilogy, and the final novel in the Star Trek post-nemesis litverse. This is a very difficult book to review. I have just finished reading the book about a half hour ago, and I wrote my review for Goodreads and for other places that I put my reviews, and boy, do I have thoughts on this book. <sighs> Let's try to get this done. The first thing I'll say about the book, it delivers exactly what you expect the book to be. Epic, carnage, death, destruction, end of universes. This book delivers. The Coda Trilogy started out with a very safe opening in Moments Asunder. A lot, now that I've, I've had about two months to reflect on this book, a lot of the decisions that Dayton Ward made in this book, I think, were decisions that the fandom would be able to ease into. This book really eases you in, not quite as many character deaths, you know, there's this big gigantic threat, but he's able to introduce it in such a way that we feel comfortable around it, while at the same time connecting to all these old Star Trek novels from the past. So this book was a very safe book. Then you have Ashes of Tomorrow, which I think is a much better book. It took some risks, but it felt like Star Trek. There was just this epic feeling to it that I absolutely loved. It had the action and pacing and perfect plotting that made it so I could just sit down and read the book in one giant sitting. It was just utterly fascinating to read about the lives of the DS9 characters that he introduced, as well as seeing the continuation of the next-gen Aventine storyline that was happening, and just had one of the best sequences I've ever read in a Star Trek book with the dry dock sequence, or is a space dock, with the, with the stealing the Enterprise sequence, um, if you know that sequence. And so this was a fantastic, wonderful book. Now comes along Oblivion's Gate, which immediately follows up the events of uh, The Ashes of Tomorrow. And what makes this book so good in its good ways is that David Mack is able to tie up the trilogy well, tie up the whole series well. It doesn't feel campy. It doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel too drawn out. It feels like he spent the exact amount of time that he needed to on this. My issue with this is that the way that he ends the book, particularly the last 50 pages of this book, or I won't say 50 pages, the last 30 pages of this book are what I had my biggest issue with. I think that the, the true denouement the true uh, uh, ending, the true tag to the book could have been seriously done better. The leading up to the climax and the climax itself was utterly brilliant. If you've watched the movie uh, Star Wars Rogue One, this book's ending and climax kind of has the same feeling to it. The sense of destruction, the sense of utter failure, the sense of, oh my goodness, we may die, but we have to save the universe. What we're doing matters. What, what we do with our life matters. And it just felt so good. And then the fact that I read this interview with David Mack, where he says that Rogue One influenced him, I, I definitely can see it in the book. So that portion of it was great, but when you get to the denouement of the book, I, which is about the last 30-ish pages, I just, I completely understand why he did it. It, it makes total rational sense. I get it. it. Makes sense. But I would not have done it this way. I think that very few TV shows 
or movies are able to nail an ending that has such wide breadth. I think that The Force Awakens, oh, sorry, not The Force Awakens, The Rise of Skywalker largely failed to wrap up the entire Star Wars saga in its final moments, but like had a, had a few things that worked, but overall didn't. And then you have something like, uh, I would say, uh, the Arrowverse, where you had Crisis on Infinite Earths, which is very similar to this trilogy. And I feel that that whole sequence was great up until the, f- the finale with, with Arrow, which I think was very weak. The only series that in my mind has truly nailed is one Star, uh, Voyager's Endgame episode, which I think completely nailed everything it needed to. And at the same time, we also have uh, uh, the Marvel movie, Avengers Endgame. Two, two, two things called Endgame are my favorites of the ending series. But those two, specifically I would say the Avengers Endgame, have the right tone, have the right decisions made when completing so much time that you feel sad that it's over, but you do feel satisfied. And I do feel satisfied with this book, and I do feel the sadness I'm supposed to feel. I do really, I really feel sad. This was, this was a gut punch of a book. However, I just don't feel that it was completely done right. And it's really hard to articulate, partially because of spoilers, which I won't get into, the biggest portion of spoilers, but there's just, it's just, and I'm not saying David Mack was necessarily wrong to do this. I think that's, I think that this book is the most controversial of the three. I think the first book is really safe. The second book, I wouldn't call it safe, but I think that it works the best. This book is definitely the swings swings, uh, the highest. It's the, it's, it's definitely the biggest risk. And I think a lot of people are going to love it. And I think some people aren't going to like it. And I do like it. I just have some issues with it. And partially I feel emotional because we're ending this 20 year line of Star Trek books from all these great series, like from Voyager and Next Generation and DS9 and Titan and Aventine and the political stuff and all the Klingon stuff, all of it, and the Mirror Universe stuff, all of it is coming to a close. And there will still be Star Trek novels, but they won't be the, the lit-verse novels. And so the fact that this book even has to exist, exist is sad. But I get it. It has to happen. All universes have to go through this type of thing, but it is sad. And so I will at least say I am glad that you happened, but I'm sad to see you go. As mirrored what the About the Author page says. And I will leave my review by quoting one of my favorite moments of Star Trek, which I feel is apt to my feeling of the Star Trek lit verse. But before I do, I'll say that this book gets a four out of five from me. I may revisit that, but four out of five. But I'll say this. Star Trek literary books. You have been and always will be my friend. Thank you for watching.